Just north of the Golden Gate Bridge lies the San Francisco bedroom community of Strawberry Point, just across Richardson's Bay from Sausalito's sleepy houseboat villages. The upper parts of this once pristine wooded peninsula were built over with million dollar houses during the 70s and 80s. On the opposite side, on lowland fill areas, more new and equally expensive houses are going up in an area adjacent to a bird sanctuary. In addition, part of the construction zone is in an area used by seals up until recent years. The project has made extensive use of lining shorelines with boulders called riprap, which makes landing almost impossible for seals and humans alike. The development recently came under fire because new docks to be built here were approved by the Marin County Board of Supervisors without an environmental review requested by the Marin County Planning Commission. Coastal Post writer Patrick Holland recently told how the entire project has been chopped up into several small permit applications, which individually sail through the permit process because each item is fairly small. According to the Coastal Post article dated May 6, 1991, the Planning Commission takes the position that the dredging permit and the dock permit should be reviewed at the same time. In response to the Patrick Holland article, Howard Belkamp, who used to live at the houseboats, wrote in the letter column that the conditional use permits for the 1970s Mesa homes specifically forbid any building on the lowlands. At the time, Al Arambaru was the ramrod of the Strawberry Council and had an interest in seeing the district prosper. In the interim, he has advanced himself to the Board of Supervisors and the Bay Conservation and Development Commission, which controls enforcement of Strawberry's old conditional use permits. This channel was cut through Strawberry Spit, forming what is now known as Arambaru Island. We talked to Bob Allen, chairman of the Strawberry Recreation District, about the island. Arambaru Island out here, uh, I think you see behind me, uh, is uh, open space now. Uh, it was scheduled originally to be built on the entire area, but uh, the, to settle a suit, actually a federal government suit, maybe give a little background, uh, Eichler uh, owned the island and went bankrupt. And it was scheduled to be built up completely, the tile area you see there. And uh, what happened next was uh, Iker, after his bankruptcy, uh, American Savings took it over. American Savings then went effectively bankrupt and took a government. The federal government applied for the permits to uh, build in the area and uh, got turned down. And they said, okay, we're going to sue. And they refused to turn it to open space. They said, we have a responsibility to collect money for the government. This was the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or the piece of it that handles the Southern's loan. And so Alan Rambo, to avoid a court case where our tax dollars are fighting tax dollars, really, uh, made a, uh, an arrangement, I guess is the best way to call it, where this became open space forever, and with that, that they would allow fairly heavy density, at least what I consider heavy density, at the other end. We also asked about the permit shopping. The district is not a has nothing to do with building. Uh, we don't... Uh, process building permits, don't apply for them or anything else. We only do things associated with recreation. We asked Jim Bloom, a longtime Strawberry resident, about the project. It's a shame the way the development turned out because it is, it, it is not typical of what Marin County has been and should be. So what happened to the plan for the condos? The plan for condominiums and townhouses uh, and apartments was turned down. So naturally, what do you build? You don't build a $50,000 house, you build a million dollar house. While all these super expensive strawberry homes quickly received permits, the remnants of a nearby houseboat community has struggled for at least 25 years to become legal. We talked to Jane Costell at the Gates Co-op Houseboat Marina. Well, the whole development all over strawberry, starting all oh, back in the late 70s, has been pretty amazing. When I first came here in 1971, that hill was bare, except for the really big house that was on the very end of the point. And throughout the 70s, these huge homes popped up like mushrooms <laughs> all over the side of the hill. And that was one period of development which didn't really, quote, offend me, unquote, as much as what's happened in the last four years. We entered the permit process in 1983 and have been totally bogged down trying to get permits. We've got $180,000 worth of plans. We've submitted everything we are supposed to submit. And we've gotten halfway through the permit process, and there we sit, and there we have sat for the last five years. Meanwhile, that project 
which had all kinds of environmental issues involved in it, envir just crunching of environmental issues right and left, has gotten built. Just wham, bam, thank you, man. Did a Rambaroo's advancement to the BCDC nullify Strawberry's conditional use permits? Was there a conflict of interest? What's happened over there is a direct progression from him beginning in local politics. He was the mayor of Belvedere, I think, or maybe it was Tiburon. And has just, I mean, his, he's just flashed onto the scene, continued to rise. He's even made noises about getting a state position. Of course, anything that's been built in his direct district, he has had a direct impact. And I think it's another example of money talks and nobody walks. I mean, that is a rich development. They are only building very big houses. There's no one-bedroom family-style structures over there. Ella Rambaru's office did not return our calls, but questions remain. This is Sidney Fribble, returning you to the College of Marin Studios.